Okay, this is the second lecture in population ecology. So the last lecture we looked at the carrying capacity and how that was regulated by abiotic non-living and biotic living factors. Now we're going to look at the human population and analyze the factors that affect its size and growth. So this is the focus of today's lecture. Okay, so if we look at human population growth over time, here we have again time and here we have population. We've looked at these graphs a couple of times. So here's human population and for many, many, many years, thousands of years, the human population really didn't change very much. Right? So we had reached carrying capacity and it had stabilized. So there was really zero growth. Then suddenly, oh, we have a little blip here, we started to grow. So the, something affected our carrying capacity, obviously, and we are experiencing exponential growth. We have that J-shaped curve, and that's continuing today. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So just like all other populations, human population will increase over time. And for most of our existence, we grew very, very slowly. We were at carrying capacity. So something has happened to our carrying capacity so that it's not limiting our population size, not keeping our population size low. So about 500 years ago, human population began to grow more rapidly. So what was happening 500 years ago that made this happen? So one is that we've started, we have advances in agriculture and industry. So with agriculture, we're, we're growing crops, we're um, farming animals, and so we have a ready supply of food. We don't have to go out and try to find our food supply. And then industry, um, we're able to manufacture many of the things that we need, and so that they're available to us and we can distribute them easily. The other thing that has changed is sanitation, medicine, and health care. So we have improved the level of cleanliness, um, the type of medicine, the medicines we have available in health care, and so that has decreased our death rates while our birth rates have remained high. So these are things that are affecting the human population and so when we're looking at this J-shaped curve what we're seeing is this spike with the Industrial Revolution. This little blip that I showed you before actually um, shows us where the bubonic plague came through and wiped out most of Europe. So here we are, you know, some plowing and irrigation and but things aren't really changing all that much. We get this little dip with the bubonic plague and now the population is spiking. So what we're looking at really when we're looking at populations is demography. So demography or demog um, demography is the study of human populations. So it's looking at human population today and trying to use that to predict what the population is going to look like into the future. So the things that a demographer looks at are things like birth rates, death rates, obviously that's going to affect the population, more births, higher population, more deaths, lower population. And what they do is they create these age, age, structure, di age structure diagrams, which I'm going to show you. And that helps them kind of look at where a co country is today and figure out where it might be in the future. So what they have studied is that populations, human populations, go through what's called a demographic transition or a change in their um, birth and death rates or a change in their population. So in stage one, there's high births, but there's also high death rate. So the population is kind of stable. The stage two is this transition, this changing in this population. So here we have a dramatic decrease in the death rate, but we're maintaining the birth rate. So this is where a lot of human populations are right now. And then once they've completed this transition, they get back to kind of a more stable um, population. Here in the United States, we've reached that stability. We're really not growing anymore. If you look at the world population, however, the world population is still in this stage one or stage two. So stage one, high death rates, also high birth rates, so it's stable. So we're getting a straight line. We get into stage two, the death rate drops, but the birth rate remains high. And so that population would increase rapidly, so that would be undergoing exponential growth. And then finally, 
the birth rate will decrease and we'll get back to a stable population, so the growth will slow. So this is an age structure diagram of the United States. And what a age structure diagram does is it shows you the ages over on the y-axis, and we have different ranges of ages. And then on the x, we have the percentage of the population. And this is split in half. So on the right, we have the females, and on the left, we have the males. So we can look at this population, and we can see that there's kind of a steady growth rate, right? So it may be growing a little bit, maybe getting I mean, more individuals born, um, but pretty much this is going to be a stable population. This is kind of like a box here, really. There's no differences. There's not like many, many, many more individuals being born than are in like the reproductive years. If we compare that to another country, Rwandan, here we have many more children. So if you notice the base of the pyramid is really base of the diagram is really big, kind of forming a pyramid here. Um, so the number of children being born is very, very high compared to individuals up into their reproductive ages. So there are many more children than teenagers, many more teenagers than there are adults. And so we see this kind of structure. This tells us that this population is increasing. So you can predict that this population will double in about 30 years based on this age structure diagram. So we then try to predict into the future what might happen. So we consider the age structure of every country. You're going to be doing a project where you're going to look at two countries and you're going to be looking at a country that's more developed, like the first graph, like the United States, and an undeveloped country, like Rwandan. Um, and so these, we can look at the age structure, but we also look at different life-threatening diseases. And so what we see in populations is over time, they're going to move through their demographic transition. And so you'll be looking at some that are in stage two, but stage two will eventually move into stage one. We've run into stage three. And in, here in the United States, we've moved over into stage three, meaning our growth rate has leveled off, or even some cases um, can be decrease, where there's actually less individuals in each generation. So what does this mean for us, that our population is growing like this? Um, and it depends on who you talk to. So ecologists say that there can be a very serious damage to our environment and our global economy if we don't do something to slow down the growth. Econ economists look at it and say, well, the science and technology can continually increase in um, our understanding, and we can actually control any of the negative impacts our population growth may have. You're going to be analyzing some of these factors in your CAPT project on human populations. So those are the two objectives that we looked at in population ecology. So hopefully now you can explain how carrying capacity is regulated by abiotic and biotic factors. And this last lecture was um, explaining factors that affect the size and growth of human populations. Thank you.